Good evening and welcome to the service of worship from the First Presbyterian Church of Titusville. With the beginning of a new year, we tend to talk about change, and the Apostle Paul is speaking about that in his second letter to the Corinthians, where he says, if a man or a woman is in Jesus Christ, he, she becomes a new person altogether. The past is gone. Behold, he says, everything has become fresh and new. Well, on this first Sunday of the new year, that's what I'd like to talk about with you. And as always, I'm so very glad that you have joined us. This is a day and a new year that the Lord hath made, and so let us rejoice and be glad therein. Let us worship God. Let us pray. O gracious God, as we make our way into the new year, give us gratitude for the assurance that you go with us, courage to face whatever challenges may come, hope that the best of life lies yet ahead. Through Jesus Christ our Lord, amen.
Congregation, please be seated. The sacrament of baptism is a sign and seal that our children are engrafted into Christ. It's a welcome into the household of faith. And you'll recall, I'm sure, that occasion when the disciples, at least, thought that Jesus was tired. And they tried to shoo the little children away. The parents wanted to bring the little kids to be blessed by, by Jesus. And Jesus' voice was heard above the crowd saying, Let the little children come unto me. Don't chase them away, for of such is the kingdom of God. And it's in that spirit that we baptize John Michael and Kaysen Allen this morning. But before we do that, Mom and Dad, a question for you. Do you confess your faith in Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior and promise in dependence upon him to raise your sons in the love of God? If so, answer, we do. We do. We do. Let us pray. Almighty God, our gracious Heavenly Father, we thank thee for the gift of little children. And especially this morning, we're thankful for the gift of little John Michael, who is going to be four next summer, and a little little uh, Case and Allen, who's going to turn one this coming Wednesday. Both precious little boys, precious in your sight, precious to us, and precious to your church. So bless us to the end that someday they'll be able to say with their own tongues, I believe that Jesus Christ is my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now, I'll warn you, we, uh, I, I scared poor uh, John to death. We did a little, little rehearsal. <laughs> We did a little rehearsal of this uh, in the church office, and uh, I uh, took him and I boosted him up into the air, and, and he was not exactly excited about that. So, so uh, we'll, we'll see what happens. Okay, here we go. John Michael, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon thee and dwell in thine heart forever. Amen. Now, could I do it one more time? I promise I'll be very gentle. Okay. Okay. <laughs> it's with great pleasure that I present to you, Can I turn you around? Uh, John, John Michael Dunham, a child of the Almighty. Now, let's see here. He's going to be, not quite yet, not quite yet. We have one more to go. Okay, Case and Allen, I baptize thee in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. May the blessings of God Almighty, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit descend upon thee and dwell in thine heart forever. His brother just asks a very logical question. Why, why are you pouring water on me? <laughs> but I better, I better introduce this one to you. Case and Allen, a child of the Almighty. May a favor rest upon 
So, we come to the first Sunday of a new year. It's uh, nice to be back with you folks. Several announcements to which I would particularly direct your attention as you reach for the pew pad. It's there to your left. Pass it along. We ask you to sign it, if you will. We'd like to have a record of your having worshipped with us on this uh, frigid winter morning. Uh, we've been on vacation, of course, for uh, a little bit, and the church program has been curtailed to the Christmas and New Year's holidays. But uh, things begin as usual this coming week. All the programs you'll see in the calendar of events for the week, every, everything starts up again this week. And I would particularly direct your attention to page 10, pages 10 and 11, where it's noted that our annual meeting, it's time to talk about that again. On the last Wednesday of January, tickets are available in the church office. They're not available for sale this morning, unless you have the exact change, and Terry can, can help you with that. But they'll be on sale after church uh, the following week, since you have change at that point. We'll be voting on a change in the church bylaws, and constitutionally, it's necessary that I share that with you. You see that on page 11, relevant to a shift in the number of deacons. And then you also see the note concerning envelope boxes, if you do not have yours yet. And also, we're looking forward to a triple F event towards the end of January, which should be very, very exciting. Among our prayer concerns this morning, we continue to pray for Ruth Martin, who continues to make a recovery, and for Pete Thompson, who is still in the Cleveland Clinic, but doing better. But then you saw me, you saw me read this very carefully. I'm going to read it. This is, this is a long one. David and Amy Burho Middleton welcomed their sixth child on December the 30th. Baby Ronan joined his four brothers and his sisters. Praise be to God for a healthy and happy baby and for a healthy and happy family. But also, uh, John Schultz is about to celebrate his 90th birthday. Has it happened yet? It's about to. Uh, Maestro, I didn't prepare you for this. We had so much going on today. But uh, could you do it for us? Where is he? He's down there. <laughs> on the top of your head, could you know what I'm talking about, don't you? I, OK, are you ready for this, John? OK. <laughs>
So we come to be blessed by the Word of God as that Word comes to us this morning from Paul's second letter to the people of the ancient city of Corinth. Hear now the Word of God. For if anyone is in Christ, he or she becomes a new person altogether. The past, the past is finished and gone. Everything has become fresh and new. Now all this is God's doing, for he has reconciled us to himself through Jesus Christ, and he has made us agents of that reconciliation. God was in Christ personally reconciling the world to himself, not counting our sins against us. And he has commissioned us with the message of reconciliation. So we are now Christ's ambassadors as though God were appealing directly through us. As his personal representative, we say, make your peace with God. For God caused Christ, who himself knew nothing about sin, actually to be sin for our sakes, so that in Christ we might be made good with the goodness of God. And on this first Sunday of the new year, may God bless this reading of his holy word to our understanding. Let us pray. Almighty and gracious God, as we move into a move into a new year. Grant, we pray, that we might take with us the things that we've, that we've learned, hopefully, in the year that has passed. We want to do this, O oh Lord, so that we do not make the same mistakes over again or allow the same temptations to conquer us or the same faults to spoil life for ourselves or or for others. So help us, help us, O God, as we embark upon a new year, always to look upwards, always to move onwards, so that with every passing day we might live with still greater confidence as we we seek, O Lord, to attune ourselves to your way and be guided by your will. In the year that lies ahead, O oh God, give us, we pray, discipline in the living our lives, living of our lives, so that we might be men and women of character. Give us, we pray, O oh God, strength of mind in deciding so that we might make decisions that are good and wise and appropriate. Give us, O oh Lord, we pray, loyalty in our friendships and faithfulness in our love. Grant, O God, that in the year that lies ahead we may live in the presence and more than that, walk in the footsteps of Jesus our Lord, who taught us to pray together, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. 
Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Good morning. How are you this morning? Welcome home. How was the sun? <laughs> oh, you miss it already. Well, you know, I, uh, I usually bring something and put it in my hand and have an object lesson, and I do have an object lesson. I've, I've got some fine new kicking sneakers here. Now, I know that you probably get your sneakers at school time, right at the beginning of school, well, I usually get some right around New Year's, right around Christmas and New Year's. But I don't like to wear them out because I don't want them to get all dirty. And Mine don't have those cool lights and stuff like that, but I'm going for comfort. And as I thought about my sneakers and my new shoes, I thought, well, where am I going to go in these new sneakers? And what am I going to do? And better yet, when I'm wearing these and I'm around the children and adults of my church, how am I going to act? How about with my family? How about with people I don't even know? Wherever I go, what is God going to do with me in the new year? Now that's a lot to think about just when you get new sneakers. But the whole idea is, it's new. God takes away the old and strengthens us in the new year. And I want you to know that we are so happy that you are with us and that in the new year together, we will love the Lord and do our very best to do his will for our lives. And I'm glad you're here today. And I'm glad that you'll be here in the weeks to come. Let's pray. Dear God, we thank you for this new year. And we ask blessing upon it with our families, our church family. Guide and direct us. In Jesus' name, amen.
congregation please be seated. So it's the new year, and uh, as happens every year at this time, we've been hearing a lot about the change. We're all well aware of the fact that there are going to be some changes in the way health care is delivered. We've probably heard quite enough about that. There are going to be some changes in terms of, of our nation's fiscal policy. It seems that maybe the so-called tapering is nigh upon us. There are going to be changes in terms, it seems, of the way the two national parties relate to each other in Washington. One can always hope. Even changes in terms of the way we buy our light bulbs, if you happen to catch that. And our house being full of old-fashioned light bulbs, yesterday I went down and stocked up and found the shelves at Walmart pretty much depleted. So change is in the air. And that's exactly what the Apostle Paul is talking about in this morning's scripture reading. If a man or a woman is in Jesus Christ, he says, he, she is a new person altogether. The old, it is finished, it is gone. Behold, he says, everything is fresh and new. As someone has said, there's nothing as predictable as change is going to come. It's going to come whether we like it or not. It's going to come whether we want it or not. It's going to come whether we expect it or not. Now, some of us acknowledge that we need to make some changes in our lives. Others of us are quicker to say, oh, no, he needs to make some change. She needs to make some change. They need to make some change. But however it comes, as someone asked me long ago, do I believe in change? And my answer to that is, if I didn't believe in change, well, I wouldn't have anything to say to you on Sunday morning. It says Paul, let me repeat it again. If anyone is in Christ, he or she is a new creation. He's talking about change. So I want to begin by noting two things. First of all, some things need to be changed. Some things need to be changed in my life. I assume probably there's some things that maybe need to be changed in your life. Some things that need to be changed in our community, our state, our nation, the world. It was James Baldwin who said, and we've printed it out on the cover of this morning's bulletin, that not everything that is faced can be changed, but nothing Nothing can be changed until it is faced. And his observation, I think, rings true. Paul knew personally what change was all about, and you know the story. The greatest persecutor of the Christian church became its greatest proclaimer. Breathing out fire and slaughter against the early Christians on the road to Damascus with Writs from the high priest determined to stomp out this heresy called Christianity. Suddenly he's there with his face in the dust. Why are you kicking against the goads, says our Lord to Paul. And then later he acknowledged he's the chief of sinners. So change always begins with a moment of confession. I tried this out on Lynn last night. She said it was okay. We'll see. I hope that some of you are old enough to remember Betty Hutton. 
For you younger folks, I know that's digging a little too deep. But Betty Hutton, for some of us, was a great actress. We remember her in the 50s and into the 60s. And then something went terribly wrong. Several divorces, bankruptcy, addiction to alcohol, depression, attempts suicide. But she changed, she changed. Did you know how it happened? She ran out of money. A Hollywood actress ran out of money. A poster pinup girl during World War II, she ran out of money. She found herself working as a cook in a refectory for Roman Catholic priests. And it was there, at the bottom of the heap, that she found God. And as some of you may know, years later, she took the role of Mrs. Hannigan in the Broadway version of Annie. Now, some of you know that when you go to a Broadway show that you get a, what's called a playbill. And at the back of the playbill, you have pictures of each of the main actors and actresses, and you have little, little bios. It'll say, well, he was in this movie, and she was in that movie, and he won this award, she was in that award. And Betty Hutton, Betty Hutton's picture, beneath her picture, she requested that just this be written. Thanks to God, I'm back. It's wonderful. Now, I do not know the things that need to be changed in your life. I do know some things that need to be changed in my life. Lynn is very diplomatic about this. She doesn't bring it up, but I'm sure she could tell you about some things that need to be changed. Perhaps there's someone in your life to whom you need to be reconciled. Well, Jesus can help you with that. Perhaps there's someone to whom you need to speak a word of forgiveness. Jesus can help you with that. Perhaps you've picked up some bad habits. You want to be rid of them. Jesus can help you with that. Perhaps without you realizing it, there's some prejudice operative in your life. Jesus can help you with that. Perhaps there's an issue of patience with which you have. I love the story because I went through it with my own children. The father goes to the store with his two-year-old son. It's the terrible twos. Some of you will remember children. Where are those little kids that I bet? They left us. They're such nice kids. I apologize. I so scared John back in my office. I'll tell you what I did. We always do a little rehearsal before the baptism. And I was in a hurry. Luke had come in to do the TV broadcast. And there were other things that needed to be tended to. And so usually I, I just hoisted him up, and oh, that was... In any case, this little boy was going through terrible twos, and his father took him, very brave guy that he was, to the grocery store and put him in the cart. And uh, the little boy was at that stage where Daddy would put something in the cart, and just as soon as Daddy put it in, he wanted to toss it out. That makes uh, I sense you can identify with that somehow or other. If he rolled the cart a little too close to the shelves, <laughs> swish uh, across the floor. And so Daddy was trying his best. The grocery store was crowded to bring some chaos out of this disaster. And all the while he was saying to himself, now, Tommy, be patient with you. Tommy, be patient. Tommy, you can handle this. Tommy, be calm. Tommy, 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 just be more patient. Tommy, Tommy, be and a, an elderly woman uh, standing back, watching this, tapped him on the shoulder and said, uh, I gather your name must be Tommy. I congratulate you on your great patience. To which he replied with a dazed look in his eyes, oh, no, ma'am, his name is Henry. I'm Tommy. <laughs> in any case, there are things in your life and my life, too, that need to be changed. But then second, if that's true, that things can be made new, it also means that there can be animation and energy in our lives. If God, in fact, is calling us to be agents of reconciliation, those are the terms that the Apostle Paul uses, then we should be more aware of the conditions around us, more aware of situations that perhaps need our attention, people who need some caring for. We are ambassadors, says Paul. 
A number of years ago, there appeared a cartoon in the New Yorker magazine. It has, has since become a classic. You probably have seen it. It's been reproduced thousands of times, not just in the New Yorker, but all, all over the country. It's a, a man who's obviously somehow made his way to a deserted island, and he's, he's, he's obviously been there for some time. His beard is down to his waist, his hair way down his back. He's looking quite disheveled. And uh, in the distance, there's, a, there's a, a large ship, and a rescue team is approaching him. The leader of the rescue team hands him a pack of papers. The man who's about to be rescued looks a little dazed. Uh, and the leader of the rescue team says, the captain sends you these with his compliments. He suggests you read the headlines. Uh, that maybe help you decide whether or not you want to be rescued. Well, it's true the headlines can be frightening. It's true you turn on the morning news. It can be frightening. You turn on the evening news. It can be scary. You tune in 24-7 to one of the news channels. It can indeed be frightening very much so. And yet, in spite of that, we are called upon to be reconcilers, ambassadors. Richard Selzer is a surgeon and a writer. Perhaps some of you have encountered some of the things he has written. His life has been one long search for faith, and he tells about that search. He's 85 years old now, and this is what he writes. I'm going to read it just the way he puts it. He says, my entire life has been one long search for faith. I haven't found it. I do not believe in God. But having said that, he adds, I want you to know that I... I love, I love the idea of God. Without it, you lead your life so unmoored, a tiny speck in a vast universe, he says. And then he adds, frankly, I am jealous of my friends who believe in God and have faith. I'm deeply jealous. I feel as if, as if I've missed out on the greatest thing that life can offer or that can happen to a person with faith. It must be wonderful, he says. It's sad, isn't it? It's sad to so search for something, not be able to find it. Do you know what the great barrier in his life was? Some of you may. His parents, his mother was Christian, his father was Jewish. They agreed that the children would be raised in the Christian faith. And so every Sunday from the time he was a little boy, he attended Sunday school. And as he got older, he attended church with his mom and, and the siblings. And then he came to the eighth grade. In the eighth grade, in that particular church to which his mother belonged, a confirmation class started. And so eagerly he showed up on the first day of confirmation class and the pastor said to him, you may not come to this class. You may not ever be a member of this church because your father is Jewish. How dare we scare? the soul of a little boy like that. But I am, I must admit, shocked sometimes, absolutely shocked, by some of the terrible, some of the frightful things, mean-spirited, cruel things that we Christians sometimes do to one another. But Paul says if anyone is in Christ, he can be made new. Well, by way of bringing this to closure, a certain radio commentator received a letter. It was written by a rancher in North Dakota. He wrote uh, that uh, his wife had died a few years before, that his children lived quite far away, that his nearest neighbor was 30 miles away. This is in North Dakota. 
that his only contact with the outside world was through the radio. That was his only contact. And his one joy in life was playing his violin. And he wrote in the letter that he knew his violin had gotten out of tune, but he had no way to tune it. And so he was asking that the radio commentator, this is on a national hookup, play on the piano the A note, orchestra's tuned to the A note, that he play on the piano the A note, or better yet, on the violin, play the A note. Now, ordinarily, of course, such letters would wind up in the, in the trash basket. But some very perceptive and sensitive secretary sent it on up the line till it reached the broadcaster. And so one morning, there was silence for a few seconds. And then on this national hookup, the broadcaster said, Mr. Rancher, out in the wilds of North Dakota, I'm about to play your A note. I'm going to play it on the piano and then on the violin. Mr. Rancher, I hope you're listening. I am about to play your A note. And then he proceeded to play it. And again. And again. And again. On a nationwide hookup. And then he said, and Mr. Rancher out in North Dakota, tune your violin. A long time ago, in a backwater village called Nazareth, a frightened father and mother by the names of Joseph and Mary got, by way of a heavenly messenger angel, the news that they were to have a son, that they were to call his name Emmanuel, which means, as you know, God with us that he would save his people from their sins. You understand what God was doing at that moment? He was giving you and me our A note to which we can tune our lives. And when we do, when we tune our lives to his, what wonderful music we can make together. That's why we're gathered round this table, to celebrate the possibilities, all that can happen when we tune our lives in the new year to him. Amen.
let us pray. God of unchanging truth, your promises are eternal. Your benevolent care spans the ages. We come with our gifts to be molded in accordance with your purposes. We offer ourselves to be shaped by your will. Fill us with wisdom and make us vessels of your truth. Make all that we do an outpouring of your goodness, spreading compassion on the afflicted and care to all who may be in need. We pray in Jesus' name, amen. Please be seated. I invite you to join me in the invitation to our Lord's Supper as it begins on page number five. Jesus said, Come unto me, all you that are weary and carrying heavy burdens, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you and learn from me, for I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your soul. Jesus said, I am the bread of life. Whoever comes to me will never be hungry, and who never, whoever believes in me will never be thirsty. Jesus said, Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness, for they will be filled. Taste and see that the Lord is good. Happy are all who find refuge in God.
Here are the words of institution of the Holy Supper of our Lord as they've been passed down to us through the Apostle Paul. For in the night our Lord and Savior was betrayed, he took bread and after he had blessed it, he broke it, gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body broken for you, even as I give it to you in his name, his disciples in the year 2014. After the same manner also he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This is the new covenant in my blood. Drink ye as oft as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you do eat of this bread and drink from this cup, you show, says Paul, our Lord's death. You remember it until he comes again. Almighty God, our gracious Heavenly Father, as we move into a new year, grant that we might go in the confidence Nothing we will face but what you do not walk with us. Change, yes, change, no. Whether we want it or not, it will be there. But Lord, grant that we have no fear, for with you by our side, no change can ever hurt, stymie, or challenge us beyond our capacities. O Lamb of God, who takest away the sin of the world, have mercy upon us. O Lamb of God, who takest away the sin of the world, grant us thy precious peace. Amen. So having shared this meal together, we adventure into the new year together, praying as we go, Eternal God, you make all things new, yet remain forever the same. Grant that we may begin this new year in faith and continue it, knowing that you are with us always. Grant that guided in all our doings and guarded in all our days, we may offer ourselves to you and to your world in love in service and in praise. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, amen. <clears throat> now may the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with us all, amen.
as we go forth into the new year, I hope you go forward in the confidence that with Christ by your side, everything is fresh and new. It's in that confidence that I can wish you all a very happy new year. And as always, I'm so very glad that you have joined us. Casts originating from the birthplace of the oil industry, we are the stream.